Vegetative Propagation Materials Vegetative propagation materials are plant parts which have the ability to produce roots then grow and develop into new plants. Vegetative propagation is a method of plant reproduction in which new plants are produced from existing plant parts, such as stems, roots, or leaves, rather than from seeds. Plant parts that can be used to reproduce new plants include Bulbals for sisal, splits for grass and pyrethrum, crowns and slips for pineapple, use of suckers in banana, apple and sisal, stem tubers for Irish potato, use of vines in sweet potato, grapes, cutting and sets for tea, napier grass, cassava, tea and sugarcane. Bulbils Bulbils are tiny plantlets that form after flowering along the stems of plants such as sisal, garlic bulbils, and tiger lily bulbils. These tiny structures contain the genetic information needed to give rise to new plants. Bulbils look like the mother plant but are smaller in size. When bulbils mature, they develop underdeveloped or early stage roots then fall off to the ground. Bulbils can be collected then raised in the nurseries before they are transferred to the main field. One sisal plant can produce up to 3,000 10 cm long bulbils that make high quality planting materials. Use of splits. These are plantlets divided from the existing mother plant with complete leaves and rooting system. Some plants, particularly those with clumping growth habits, can be propagated by dividing their existing clumps or colonies. This method, known as splitting, involves separating the plant into smaller sections, each capable of growing independently. Pyrethrum and pasture grasses are often propagated through splitting. Pyrethrum splits are first grown in the nursery and transplanted in the field. Use of crowns and slips. These are materials used to propagate pineapples. Crowns are born on top of the fruit and are broken off and prepared for planting. Crowns take two years to mature into pineapples. Crowns are advantageous as the crown is identical to the mother pineapple thus ensuring uniform growth. Slips are born at the base of the pineapple fruits. They are cut then prepared for planting. Slips take one year 10 months to mature into pineapples thus have faster growth rates. Crowns and slips are first planted in the nursery before transplanting to the main field. This method can also be used for perennials like irises and daylilies. Use of suckers. Suckers are shoots that emerge from the base of a plant near the main stem. Suckers have adventitious roots which grow quickly when planted to form a new plant. Propagation through suckers involves detaching these shoots and planting them separately to grow into new plants. Suckers are used to propagate bananas, sisal, and pineapples. Fruit trees, such as apple trees, can also be propagated using suckers. Use of stem tubers. Stem tubers are swollen underground stems that store nutrients and can be used for propagation. Potatoes are a classic example of stem tubers. This stem tubers have auxiliary buds also called eyes that sprout into a new plant. Root tubers such as sweet potatoes are not commonly used for propagation since they produce weak stems. Use of vines. Vines are long and thin climbing softwood stems that produce roots easily upon planting. Vines are cut from soft, green rapidly growing shoots. Leaves and nodes are included in the vine cutting. Roots are produced from the nodes. Sweet potatoes, grapes, and passion can be propagated using vines. Use of cutting and sets. Cuttings are portions of plants' parts such as stems, roots, or leaves which are cut and then planted. As stem cutting must have bud that will develop into a shoot. Cuttings are stimulated to produce roots by use of rooting hormones. Cuttings are used to propagate plants including tea, roses, cassava, napier grass, and sugarcane. Stem cuttings used to propagate sugarcane are known as sets. They are 30 to 45 centimeters long and have 3 to 5 nodes. Conditions that encourage rooting of cuttings. Warm temperatures around the root zone and cool temperatures for the aerial part of the cutting. High relative humidity which lowers transpiration rate. High light intensity for softwood cuttings such as napier grass and tea. Low light intensity for hardwood cuttings such as cassava, napier, and sugarcane. Plenty of oxygen for root formation. Treating the cutting with rooting hormones such as indole acetic acid. A lot of leaves for photosynthesis and softwood cuttings, while no leaves for hardwood cuttings.